Mark Santiago here, and welcome to the Empowered AF Podcast, where each episode we share powerful strategies to help you communicate, act, and lead like an empowered man. Thanks for joining me. All right, welcome, welcome, welcome to another Empowered AF episode. I've got my man Drew with me, Andrew Lori, who is our accountability coach. We call him affectionately Mandrew because he's like super manly. Like he's probably the more manly of all of our coaches. He's got the beard. Well, I've got a beard, but he's got tattoos that I do not have since I'm a tattoo virgin still even at 41 years old. And he's got now a six pack of abs because he's lost some weight. Dude, tell me about that. What, what have you been doing? You're like losing weight and shit. I'm losing weight and gaining strength. You know, yep. one of the biggest things that I knew is something was wrong. Uh, I, was, I was not able to lose weight and everything. So I went and got my blood work done, hopped on some uh, hormone replacement therapy, which helped. But it, at the same time, I just got extremely disciplined with my uh, my diet and what I do. Uh, Monday through Friday, I'm tight, tight, tight on the weekends to have a good time. That's awesome. Dude, the hormone replacement stuff has been big for me as well in my journey. And um, it's definitely something if you are a guy who's in your 30s, or 40s, like some of us are, might be something to look into. Stay tuned as Empowered Man gets deeper. We may we may uh, start working with some doctors and try to help parlay that for some of you guys to make it easier for you to get access to the same stuff that we're using. Anyways, welcome to Empowered AF. Today, we're going to actually talk about one of my favorite topics. Well, I always say that because they're all my favorite topics, right? Because I'm not going to talk about something that I'm not passionate about. And that is our ego. That is our ego. So, Andrew, you and I were talking about ego um, over the last, really the last several months and the clients we're working with in Thrive, specifically our Thrive program, which is our, our really intensive private client mastermind group um, with guys that are super successful in life or in, in terms of usually their job, but they are struggling at home with their marriage and they really want to own their shit. Um, tell me about what you're seeing in terms of ego in our Thrive program, not to call out clients, but just like, especially as they come in before they make that transition, before they make that leap into this empowerment journey. But what are you seeing when you're seeing guys, especially when they come in around ego? Well, number one, they don't think they're egotistical or that they're even thinking about their ego. You know, we just had that conversation is, you know, these guys are successful in one aspect of their life, right? No matter what it be, parent, business, job, most of the time it is job and business. And what they do is they take that, oh, well, I'm this guy over here. I should be this guy over here. And they start protecting it. They start thinking that they're protecting themselves and their ego at home or with that, whatever. But they, what they don't realize is it's actually their traumas and everything that has built that ego that they don't understand. So as they come in, you know, we call them out on their ego all the time. And then probably one of my favorite things to do is get a guy that's extremely ego on their shit and saying all this stuff. And it's like, dude, let your ego go. Let your ego go. Well, that's not my ego. I beg to differ. So yes. ego, what we see in Thrive is these guys come in hurting a lot of them, but they when they start receiving feedback, it's extremely defensive. And they don't understand why they're getting defensive around this, but we do now. And we've done our research on this and done obviously our thing. And it's, hey, it's your ego talking. So one of the first things we have to do is break down that ego. Yeah, I, I love how you describe that because when we're hurting, our ego is talking usually. It, it, it's the, and if, you, if you're not familiar with this concept of ego, Sigmund Freud invented it. I'm not a fan of Freud, Freudian analysis. Um, he invented parts of therapy or a lot of, he's one of the big influencers, him and Andrew uh, uh, Young, uh, Jungian, J-U-N-G, are some of the bigger psychoanalytical type models. Um, and Jung is not actually a psychoanalyst, that's Freud. But but anyways, they're, they're fathers of normal therapy and, and modern day therapy and such. But they have this idea of id, ego, and superego. Id being more like the deviant side of you, the sexual, like animalistic nature, the superego being more the moralistic side of you. So kind of like the cartoon version, you know, where the guy's like, got to make a decision. He's got the devil on one side and the angel on the other. And that's where Freud kind of came up with this concept where your ego. Uh, but what we, what we see is a little bit different in the sense that a man who is facing separation and divorce, let me frame this for you. A man facing separation and divorce comes to us with his ego in hand and is like, I have been crushed. 
I love my wife. I want to be with her. I want to be with her. I want to be with her. I'm not selfish. I'm going to do everything I can to make this work, blah, 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 blah. And the first thing I usually tell them is, dude, your ego is in the way. So just like you were saying, you know, let go of your ego. I'm like, your ego is in the way. The, the reason you are clinging to your wife is because of your ego. The reason that you can't get past this pain is because of your ego. The reason that you um, struggle with the fact that she is cheating on you is because of your ego. And it's not to say that you, you can't have these feelings, right? I mean, like, I, I think that would be the thing, right? We're not trying to say you can't have feelings. What we're trying to say is those feelings should not dictate your outcome and what you do. So we, we talked about that and, and you know, I mean, everyone has it, right? Like I remember talking to a new client recently and he, and he was like, I'm not selfish. And I just stopped him. I said, you are selfish. And he was like, wait, what? I was like, you are selfish. Um, yeah, I don't care if you're faith-based or, or super moralistic or, or you're, you're the best Buddhist or, you know, Zen master in the world. We are all born selfish. We all have a selfish nature to us. And that is sort of that ego. Um, and so we all display it in healthy and unhealthy ways. One of the questions that, that you had on here that we were going to discuss today is, you know, we defined it who has it, but what does it mean to protect your ego in an unhealthy way? So let me hear some of your thoughts on that. So in this, a lot of this came up, you know, we were even talking about this for a while. I wanted to do a podcast about it, but uh, Dr. Nicola Perra, the holy, uh, the holistic psychologist put something out on ego and it really hit home with me, right? Because everybody has ego. And what happens is when you're triggered, it's really your ego talking. So yeah. everybody has an ego, right? And our last conversation was around emotions. Ego and emotions tie into each other 100%. Yep. Because where is that coming from? So unhealthy ways to cope with it is toxicity, right? No, I'm not doing that. You're doing that to me. Or B, well, you don't see who I am. I am this person. And you project your ego onto somebody, which is the unhealthiest thing to do, is you project your ego onto somebody and that's what comes in when a lot of people start talking about uh, self-confidence and other things. If you are projecting over self-confidence, over egotistical things, what you're really saying to somebody is, I'm insecure. I need to protect myself and I don't know how to. So it comes out in toxic, toxic traits. Yeah, Dude, it's huge because as humans, we have this carnal desire to protect ourselves. It is just like, ingrained in us where it's like, I've got to protect my body from getting killed. I've got to protect my mind from, you know, being manipulated or whatever, my heart from being destroyed. So everything, especially as men who don't know how to articulate feelings and emotions as it is, we put up all these walls and all these defenses. And when it comes to our wives and marriage specifically, because that's a lot of what we do in Empowered Man, one of the things I've noticed is that a man who's facing separation and divorce, a man who's being cheated on specifically, he's so focused on his ego. He's so focused on how he's got to defend himself that I didn't do anything wrong. She's the one that's doing this, hitting the she button constantly instead of hitting the me button. And that's why we teach that concept. If you've ever heard me say, stop hitting the she button, start hitting the me button, it's because the more focused you are on she, the greater she becomes. It's the, it's the principle of, of, I don't even know the name of the principle. I know there's a principle, but it's um, there's some sort of law, whatever, where what you focus on becomes your reality. The more you focus on it, the problem, the bigger the problem becomes. There's some word nerds probably going to email me and be like, it's actually this, it's called this thing. But that's, that's the point is that we get so focused on her and what she's doing because we're trying to protect our ego. We're trying to protect ourselves. I've had guys be like, yeah, I mean, you know, her parents know that she's messing up and her parents are on my side. I'm like, whoa, whoa, wait a second. So what you're telling me is you've got everybody in the family against her because of what she's doing wrong. I did that. I totally did that. I called up all the troops. I'm like, hey, somebody needs to go talk to a girl over there. She's doing wrong. She's hurting me. And that's manipulation. And that manipulation right. comes from a hurt ego. My ego could not take the fact that my wife was cheating on me. It literally could not take it. And there are so many of you men that are listening to this podcast, whether you're being cheated on, separated, divorced, doesn't matter. Fact is your ego cannot take the fact that she is doing this to you. I heard this while I was going through that time many years ago where this, uh, this pastor I was listening to, he said, 
it's time for you to stop crying for you and start crying for her. And I was like, well, that's profound. And it was this idea that your wife is actually going through pain. Like, like she doesn't have pleasure in torturing you and, and having an affair and doing the shit to you. She is in pain. When a woman has an affair, it alters her identity. And while she's in the midst of it, she might claim that she's having the best time of her life, but deep down inside, she's in fucking pain. She, some women are literally in hell when they're going through this. And if all you can do is focus on your shit and how she's hurt you and all these things, you will never be empowered. You will never be empowered. You will always come at it from a disempowered place because disempowered men are always focused on what she's doing, not what I'm doing. What do you want to add to that? So I, I, I want to add two things to that because you hit two things. And the, the first one that you talked about was um, her greatness, right? The more you talk about her, you put her. So essentially you're putting up her on a pedestal. And that's another thing we have to hit all the time, right? I was going through one of our assignments the other day and it was the apology letter. And the opening sentence literally put his wife on top of the apology letter, like on top of that pedestal before owning his shit. I'm like, what are you doing to yourself? You detached from the outcome. You don't know these other things, but you, you literally put the words in there, which means tells me you still have her up here. So the more you focus on them and giving and being is a great thing. Taking care of all those things are a great thing. As long as you don't lose yourself. Yeah. Right. And that's what we're talking about is putting that person on a pedestal to lose yourself is protecting your ego. Oh, I don't want to see them who, who they really are. I want to tell myself a story about them so that I can protect myself and not truly look at the true serum of who, what this person is. So that's number one. And number two, I was talking with a really good friend of mine. And one thing she said about cheating, which hit me right square in the face, because we were talking about ego. She said, men cheat to stroke their ego and to stay. Women cheat to finalize and be done with the pain. Yep. And I was like, holy shit. Like, and after, I, obviously, I'm a coach now. So I asked the deeper questions. Where'd that come from? All that stuff. And it went to everybody that she's known that's cheated as a male was looking to stay in the relationship and get their ego struck. Every female she knew that cheated was like, I'm done with the relationship. I don't want to hurt myself anymore. So I'm going to go cheat and find something new. Yep. And it all came back to the concept of men needing their ego stroked. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and it's ego for the woman in a different way, but it's, but for right. what we're talking about purposes here, you know, it's interesting. I actually posted this this morning, not even thinking about what we're going to talk about. I posted this in our, in our thrive community group. And I said, don't let the pendulum swing so far back. It hits you in the ass. I love the ownership you guys are taking, but always remember there's a difference between responsibility and fault. While you may be responsible for the failure of marriage, you are not at fault for its failure. It takes two to tango. It takes two to have a baby and it takes two to have a successful marriage. Own the failures, own the responsibilities, but don't let shame kick you in the ass while you own your shit. And that's super important because we also see the flip side of ego, which is that I'm this parasite. I'm a nobody. I, you know, I just, I need you back, whatever, babe, whatever. And that's still ego. That's still yeah. you in codependent relationship of, you know, minimizing yourself. Anytime a man has to minimize himself or maximize himself at the fault or stake of another person, that's ego. That's you yeah. not being mature with who you are. Whereas empowered man, what we teach is that you find this, this line of evenness where it's like, hey, I'm not better than you. I may be ahead of you in certain areas, but I'm not better than you. I, I'm not lower than you. We're, we're on the same plane. And that, that brings a healthy relationship dynamic because then it's not who's greater, who's lesser. That doesn't matter. What matters is you and how you show up as a man each and every day. Yeah, exactly. Right. Like in any relationship, if you feel you need to show up in a certain way, because whatever that you have to be better than you're competing against somebody because of your ego, right? You, maybe you're told something and you're something that he says, well, no, I'm not. I'm going to go do this instead. That's protecting your ego. Yeah. And to be honest, like one of the other things that you just hit is, you know, people lose themselves by putting them on a pedestal, like we said, or doing certain things, but some smart man at one point when he was coaching me on a one said, are you doing to be or being to do? And God just said that FYI, that smart man's right there. Mark, uh, when he was coaching me one-on-one -on -one. and 
to be honest, I had to think about it for a long time. And I just said this on our call today. And what I've realized is at certain points of my life, I was being so that somebody else could be happy. Hmm. Now I do because that's who I am. Yeah. I am a man that loves to do. I'm a man that loves to, you know, help people with their cars or go buy out the food, go buy the alcohol. And I don't do it to get the response of, oh, will that person like me? Well, I don't give a shit. That's just who I am. Yeah. But it took a while to get to that point and realize that point. So what you're talking about is living from a place of authenticity, which is impossible exactly. to the ego. I mean, it, it's, it's impossible because if you're going to be um, so focused on yourself and self-preservation, you'll never actually live authentically. And I think right. what, what every man wants to be able to articulate is I just want to be myself and not have to give a fuck. Like if you're listening to this and that resonates with you, fucking shout amen or shout yes or whatever you want to do in your car. I don't care where you are. Say, yes, that is exactly what I want. I want to be okay with who I am and not give a fuck what other people think. And when right. we get to that place, to the, what Andrew calls the IDGAF muscle, where we, where we, where we, I don't give a fuck muscle gets so built into us. It's not that we don't care about people's feelings. It's that we don't allow their feelings and their voice to influence us to live in, uh, in inauthentic life out of alignment with who we are. Right. And the only way to do that is to have your ego, but know what your ego is. Yeah. Right. You need to know what that ego is and be able to put that aside and say, I'm going to live authentically for who I am. If I say something again, we just literally talked about this on, on our call today. If I say something and it offends you, that has nothing to do with what I said, because I truly believe what I said. Now, if you say it out of egotistical ways, right? Like basically I am going to hurt you. Now that's a completely different thing. And I don't live for that shit. Yeah. But what I live for is I'm going to tell you my truth. And if you are hurt by it, I'm going to listen to your opinion because I respect that you have an opinion, but it has nothing to do with my opinion. Yeah. Or few. Yeah. It, it it's, it's absolutely necessary if you're going to live an empowered life. And, and I mean, you know, guys listening to this and you're like, Oh, I don't know if, you know, like I want to be empowered. I wanted this and all that. But like when push comes to shove, that means you got to do the fucking hard work. I love there was there was actually a client this morning um, and and he posted or well, maybe it was last night when he posted this, but he posted this in the group and I want to try to find it. It was um, it was the one from Mark. Did you see that um, about how he articulated his his conversation of growth? And he was like, basically, he said, um, you know, I was in a conversation, had a hard question. As usual, my reply came in as an equivocation that would save her from getting upset and lashing out. So he's basically saying, I did what I normally do, which is, I don't want to do this. Empowered man thinking, I felt her disconnect, and I felt my own fear with feelings of weakness and inadequacy at about the same time. I then applied my understanding of truth and vulnerability in about 20 minutes, asked permission to reopen the same hard question, which is huge. So he basically identified, he responded in an unhealthy way. And this is, God, this is what we teach right from the beginning. Power triangles, brevity, all those things is for the purpose of you putting the ego to, to rest so that you can make her feel heard and understood. And guys, we don't teach this shit so that you save the marriage. We teach this shit so you live from an empowered place. And if it works to the point where she's like, holy crap, you're a completely different person. I want to be with you. Or she's like, fuck this shit. You're talking like a therapist. I want nothing to do with you. Like we have no control over that, which is like what you were just saying. But our goal is to empower men to make their wives feel heard and understood. So then conversation two, he writes this in there. I set the narrative, something we teach, proceeded to explain the truth, calm and concisely. I made myself walk into vulnerability and observing her recoil of emotions. I had the opportunity to be an empathetic listener. Another thing we teach you in Thrive. And even though this seemed like conflict to me, because I used to avoid all conflict, which is what he just said. He goes, I used to avoid all conflict. I could sense underneath a tightening connection. I didn't try to fix anything, but I definitely noticed our bond. That's fucking huge because what women right. crave more than anything is emotional connection. They don't care if you got a 12 inch cock. They don't care if you're good at nipple play. That's not what they care about. What they care about is emotional connection. All that other shit will actually feel even better. 
if you're if you're a guy who's still with your wife and there's not separation divorce and you're listening to this because you're like oh things are a little shifty right now and you're you're not a guy who's like in the midst of it you still need what we have and thrive our program is not just for guys who are separated and divorced our program is for guys who are on the edge and are starting to realize i fucked up i need to like own my shit. i need to be better at these things and you emotionally connect with her you will change your life, but that can only come from vulnerability. It can only come from places where ego doesn't exist. Right. You got to put your, that ego aside, that trauma, whatever you had that makes you have that ego. You got to put it aside and say, hey, something's not right. I'm willing to listen. And that all comes from, again, the more vulnerable you can get, the more in touch you can with your emotions. You're looking at your ego and saying, hey, something's wrong here check engine lights on, I got to go figure it out. So it's huge to be able to put those things aside, even in a conversation, a basic conversation, which we teach, right? Detaching from the outcome, wanting to say who you are and express your feelings. But something else you said was it takes two. So Misty always says this, right? There's always a hailstorm and a turtle, always in every conversation. Well, what you want to try and take away is that and say, we can communicate our feelings and opinions without that ego popping up that we have to start defending, which is toxicity. Instead, let's have that conversation, feelings, opinions, and if they don't equal each other or are the same ones, both of you have to realize, hey, I'm gonna put my ego down and say, let's just agree to disagree right now because that's the, the best thing. I appreciate you have feedback. I appreciate you have respect. But again, our men that come in, and I was one of them, would always be like, why are you attacking me? Right. But what I was saying is you're attacking the little boy in me, that ego. And I don't know how to express this feeling that's coming up, but now I do. And here I am. I'm going to express it. I'm going to give you my opinion. And if you have a different opinion, that's great. That's a good thing because that's where growth comes from. Dude, I'm going to give a, I want to give a practical right on the cusp of that because of what you just said. So in, in my own life, you know, I, I practice what I preach and, and I, that's, this is why I have to live it authentically is because and probably one of the reasons I forced myself to start a company doing this is because I wanted to live in power. And then, man, if I'm going to teach principles, I better fucking, I better fucking live those principles. And so, um, Amy and I had a, a, um, not a fight, but like a couple weeks ago, I was like playing Madden or something. And, um, my son hadn't taken a shower yet. And if this is like, this is the real life, practical, stupid shit that we, that, it's those little foxes that spoil the vine, right? And this was one of those little yep. foxes that I knew had not taken care of that would happen. So I'm playing bad or whatever, and I don't know, I'm losing or something. Oh, this is what happened. She was on a call with some friends, whatever. She comes downstairs, notices my son hadn't taken a shower yet. She's like, why hasn't David taken a shower yet? I immediately felt attacked. I immediately felt like I'm a bad parent. So my snap reaction was, David, go take a shower. You know, instead of like acknowledging what she said, and right. she sits down and I'm just like, mm, I'm just like playing the game and I'm like irritated. And she said something else. And I was just like, wow, whatever, you know, like, and I was just like irritated and, you know, I wasn't even losing the game. I was, I was actually winning, but like I was irritated. And so she gets up and she leaves. I'm like, fuck, fuck. I did it. I did what I teach not to do, but this is what I love about the work we do, man. This is, this is what I love about this shit. It's not about you being perfect as a man. It's not about you like always communicating perfectly, always setting the narrative perfectly, always hearing her perfectly. It's not about that. It's about you killing the ego, being humble and going back and dropping a power triangle. Yep. So yep. 20 minutes later, my mental processors were going, shit, you know, you fucked up. <laughs> you know, you got to own this shit. And I formulated my power triangle, started with my power statement of I felt attacked. I felt these mm -hmm. things. And I said, but the way I responded was unhealthy. And I want to own that and let you know I am I am sorry for how I how I did that. And immediately there was, you know, with her, uh, you know, because I could tell there was like a little bit of a a little disconnect because she felt right. hurt. And she's an introvert, I'm an extrovert. So the way we deal with our pain is completely different. She shuts down and I want to like talk and talk and talk. So I, I explained that. And then she heard me and she responded with, I forgive you. And of course, you know, like whatever, like it was good. It was, it was, it was healthy again. And, and that's what I strive for and not to, to keep us all perfect, but to go, 
I don't ever want any one little thing to come in and have its place in our marriage, in our life. Because every time, guys, you let one of those little fights, one of those little things stay there, they become buried and they become entrenched. And it's like plaque buildup on your teeth. You got plaque in your marriage. You should probably do a training on plaque in your marriage. But but literally where it's like you've got plaque buildup in your teeth because you don't brush your teeth every night or you don't brush your marriage every night free of all that shit. You know, putting some toothpaste on yourself to a little floss, put a little, you know, uh, Listerine in there in your marriage so you can have better sex. Right. That's what happens It's when you don't do that shit. That's what happens. And so my encouragement to you guys today is to kill the fucking ego is to hear what your wife is saying, understand what she's saying, not from your ego perspective of like, oh, I got to get a, a, a word in. I've got to say this. I've got to. But hear and understand. Let that bitch die. Not the woman. Your ego, your ego is a little bitch, is a little whiny bitch. Let that thing die so that you can be an empowered man. Andrew, what would you give as like one tip or or one thing for a guy to think about before we wrap this episode? I mean, what you just hit was great, right? And that's a, a practical when there's a fight. But your ego pops up even in basic conversations. And I'm totally. going to give an example here. Is somebody comes to you, could be a friend, could be your wife, could be a partner, whatever. doesn't matter what they are and says, hey, I had a tough day at work. This is all going on to me, all this stuff, right? As egotistical men, we're like, well, fuck, why are you letting that happen? Just go fix it, right? (laughs) But that's not what they want. That's not what they want. What they want is to be felt heard. So open that up. Oh, man, you know, another man, that same man told me, hey, sometimes you just got to listen and be there and ask me to watch Beverly Housewives, right? Listen to how they converse. Man, that must really suck for you. How does that feel? Yeah. And that opens up more dialogue. So as people open up more about their problems to you and things, it's because you're empathetically listening, because you're able to put that ego down, not go into fix it mode. And you're able to listen to somebody with their fault, even though you might have an answer. You don't need to speak to that answer. Shut the fuck up, acknowledge and listen. Yeah. I mean, it's almost like if your three-year-old comes to you and is like telling you about their boo-boo, you're not going to like shame them because they, they fell down. Right. You're like, Oh, what's going on? What happened? And you almost have to think of it that way. It's not that she's a three-year-old, but that she has emotional needs that need to be met in a different way than the way men meet those needs. Yep. And we're like, Oh yeah. What's up, man? Drink a beer. Blah. My dick's so big. Blah, blah, blah. Right. Like that's how we are. Whereas women are like, Oh my God, this happened. Oh my gosh, this hurts. You know, we're like, all oh, these whiny bitches. Oh, it's so annoying. But the fact is, is that's how they're expressing what's going on. And if you actually yep. care and you're not selfish, you actually care about her, you will do exactly what he just said, which is be present in the moment and actually hear her. And presence, we got a, We just did a, a training on that called The Power of Presence. It's one of the earlier episodes, a couple episodes ago from this one. Go listen to it. But I talk about the idea of being present in every situation, what that looks like, and, and being ready to go. I'm doing something and somebody's trying to talk to me to go, hey, can I finish this before I hear you on your day? Or yep. let me pause what I'm doing here so that I can focus on you and hear what happened today and empathize yep. with you. Because a lot of times that's all it is, is like you're trying to do something else. And she's like, nah, 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 this happened, this happened. Oh, my God. And you're like, well, just fix it. No, no, no. <laughs> like you don't want to take the time for that. Right. So, dude, right. this was a great episode. Um, I'm, I'm glad we did this on Ego. I'm looking forward to we'll do another one here soon on community, which I think is going to be great. So stay tuned for that one. And uh yeah, any any final parting thoughts? Um, put that ego down, like Mark said. Put that ego aside. Learn what your ego is telling you. Learn what your feelings are telling you. And that is where your authentic self will be. That's right. Well, my final thoughts are this, guys. If you are not in a place where you know you're healthy, if you are if you're in a place where you know that you need to do the work, that you're ready to own your shit, you're ready to release from the pain, you're ready to fucking lead again in your life, then I want to recommend that you get on a call with our team. You go to empoweredman.co slash application, empoweredman.co, not com, .co slash application. And we will have a call with you to discuss what's going on. This is not a traditional sales pitch. It is meant for you to be coached basically by one of our team members and really understand where you're at, what you need to do, kind of build out a game plan for you. And make a decision whether you want to join Thrive or not. 
Um, Thrive is not for every man. We didn't make it for every man. Um, we have multiple lower ticket products like our, our 30 day challenge, our uh, communication masterclass. The links to those are below. Um, but if you're a guy that's serious about real transformation, lifelong change, I want to challenge you to jump into our Empower Man Thrive program, jump into the community that we have there that is phenomenal. You get to work with this amazing accountability coach, Andrew, who was one-on-one -on -one coach by me for a year, has my DNA, and that's why I trust him um, and do it, and is also led by our director of client success, Joey Wilder. We have an incredible team of coaches. We now have six group calls per week, including now a co-parenting call for those of you that are in the co-parenting mix. I think we have put together the best men's empowerment program on the market, and I'm excited to see you come join us. So if you want to join, join at empoweredman.co slash application, and we will see you soon. Hey, this is Mark Santiago, CEO and founder of Empowered Man. I want to thank you for listening to today's podcast. However, before you go, I want to give you a special invitation. Now, listen, we've got a program that is designed specifically for men who are hurting right now, who are on the verge potentially of divorce, who are facing potential separation or already separated, and they don't know what to do. They don't know where to turn. They're dealing with anxiety. They're dealing with cheating. They're dealing with all kinds of shit. If that's you, I want to challenge you to take the Empowered Man 30-Day Challenge. That's right, the Empowered Man 30-Day Challenge. You can go to emchallenge.com right now and sign up for the 30-Day Challenge. Here's why I think you should do that. If you're hurting, you need to understand why you're hurting. You need to understand what is actually going on. In week one of the challenge, we are gonna actually rip off that Band-Aid a little bit and coach you through that process. And then we continue to do that process all the way to the point where you start to make decisions that are empowered instead of disempowered. I don't know about you, but I would much, much, much rather make decisions from a place of strength than a place of weakness. So if you're facing decisions, if you're facing this anxiety, what do I do? How do I respond when my wife is being toxic? I don't know what to do. My wife is cheating on me. I don't know what to do. My wife doesn't love me. I don't know what to do. We are going to help you find those answers within. Now look, this 30 day challenge is probably unlike any other you've been a part of. Why? Because not only do we have daily assignments happening in the program every single day, but you also get live group coaching calls. I said live group coaching calls with myself and my lead coach. That's right, I am a part of this. It's not just some other people doing it. I am there live with you every single week call that we are on. Third part of that is you're gonna have a community of other guys that are going through exactly what you are going through. And the best part of this, this isn't even a fraction of the price we could charge for it. In fact, at some point we may raise the price, but right now it is at a bargain. So go to emchallenge.com, emchallenge.com to take the Empowered Man 30 Day Challenge, and I will see you on the inside.